In today's world of back-to-back -back Zoom meetings, constant notifications, and never-ending doom scrolling, it may seem harder than ever to simply pay attention. In 2012, researchers at the University of California, Irvine, estimated that the average human's attention span was around 75 seconds. In recent years, this number has plummeted to 47 seconds. So what's driving this decline? Researchers point to an ever-growing number of distractions all vying for people's attention. And not only is there more content than ever, but even the construction of media itself has gotten quicker and quicker. The rise of short-form content on apps like TikTok and Instagram are reinforcing this shift, especially amongst younger users. One recent study by Yahoo and media firm OMD Worldwide found that Gen Z's attention span for advertisements is just 1.3 seconds. With so much stimulation, it can feel almost impossible to slow down and catch a breath. And I started seeing my students struggle more and more. And they said that it's because their world becomes more and more abstract. They feel like they're languishing. They feel distracted. That's researcher Christian Madsberg, a professor of applied humanities at the New School in Manhattan, New York. His new book, Look, How to Pay Attention in a Distracted World, aims to help Americans improve the relationships in their lives through the repetitive practice of direct observation. He uses this example to characterize the different forms of attention a person can hold. If you walk down the street, you can walk down the street and not pay attention to anything in particular. You just have this panoptic type of attention. You can then have another type of attention, which is focus. So focusing on something and blurring everything else out. But then there's this third type of attention that I call hyper-reflection in the book, which is paying attention to why people are doing what they're doing, to based on what are they moving through the world, how are their world making sense to them, rather than what's making sense to you, how it's making sense to them. And that is a practice of observing other people's meaningful world. Madsberg's class at the New School outlines several key steps to this technique. One easy starting point is to understand how humans are different at observation than, say, a camera or computer. To best practice this, he gave students a real-world observational assignment. I asked them to go out, figure out a social phenomenon, and observe it. So, for instance, I asked some of the students to go observe what it's like to be seen as a musician at a jam session. So instead of just being immersed in the jam session, then observing the dynamics between the musicians and how they try to be seen, how terrified they were of each other, really, because it's quite a judgmental situation, and have that attitude towards what you're seeing, where you're recording rather than judging. You're trying to observe without thinking really, just recording uh, what you're seeing. And then you can always have opinions afterwards. And the students started saying, instead of seeing the world through the filter of my opinions, I see it directly. And it made them feel more connected, more empathetic with the world to stop being so judgmental. But what happens when we don't pay attention to the world around us and jump to conclusions? They end up leading abstract lives. They end up leading a life where they look at the world through a window or a filter instead of directly. And I could see that the kids that I taught that did that felt distant from each other and from the world. So I think we miss a relationship to the world that's direct and meaningful and colorful. Without observation, it's hard to slow down and pay attention to different perspectives or strategies. Madsberg believes that the pandemic also added to this struggle. During this period, many Americans got used to interacting with their circles via social media or through video calls or texting. While this can sometimes be useful and feel easier than getting together, it can never replace meeting in person. Social media is about friendships and relationships, but thinking that that is friendship and relationship, or at least the full picture of that, is simply not true. I think we are substituting deep, meaningful parts of life by thinking that we can use technology as a replacement. I think the same goes with video conferencing. Thinking that 
connecting to each other in video conferencing rather than in rooms with our bodies where we have the whole context of each other is completely misunderstood. It's fine for some things, but thinking that that is work and that is colleagues and that that is communication and connection and even the phenomenon of just meeting, it's not even meeting each other. So I think definitely technology gets in the way and undermines this ability to pay attention. So if you want to improve your observational skills and gain greater focus, Madsberg has some pointers. He encourages listeners to begin by trying out this exercise. Take a piece of paper, go to a place where there are other people. And instead of judging what you're seeing, instead of thinking you already know what that is, to the mall or the town square or just the street, look what's happening. Look at what's happening and record it. Describe rather than judge. And then when you come home, look at it again. And you would probably see it's pretty magical what's happening. The way we move through the world, the way it makes sense to us, the way humans pay attention to the world, it's a magical thing. It's very different from a robot or a machine because it's filled with color and meaning. So describe rather than judge is something you should do just like a gym, just like going to the gym, but a gym for your attention rather than your legs or arms. It's also critical to take a very real look at your average digital exposure. Take an inventory of how much time you spend in front of a phone, TV, laptop, tablet, and any other device on a given day. Is it possible to cut this use down by 15 or 30 minutes? Can you also shift some interactions from digital to in-person? For instance, instead of liking and commenting on a post, reach out to a friend and set up a dinner date or plan an evening walk together. Madsberg says that these changes require commitment and practice. The first few days or weeks may feel unsettling, but keep going. Feeling more focused and less flustered doesn't happen overnight. For more tips and direction, check out Madsberg's book, Look, How to Pay Attention in a Distracted World. To find out more about our guest, Christian Madsberg, head to viewpointsradio.org. This segment was written by our associate producer, Tabor Brewster. Our executive producer is Amira Zaveri. Our studio production manager is Jason Dickey. I'm Marty Peterson. 